The key to supportive housing is funding for the services. How would you ensure that supportive housing has adequate funding? How would I ensure that affordable, can you read that again? I'm sorry, I got it. The key to supportive housing okay. is funding for the services. Right. How would you ensure that supportive housing has adequate funding? Okay, well we've talked a lot about um, getting a um, affordable housing bond passed. That's one of the ways that we can afford it. I mean, absolutely, services have to be in place in affordable housing. Otherwise, you end up with drug dealers and prostitution in with children, which is something that I've seen a lot in the SROs that I've been in recently. And um, we need to keep that funding, we need to find that funding first in the city budget, and I'm sure that there are other ways that we think that we can cut, such as the number of people doing PR before um, the mayor. Uh, that's a, thousands of dollars that could go right into uh, funding housing um, services in housing. So we just need to find that money immediately. My name is James Keyes, and I'm also the chair of the San Francisco Mental Health Board. We have held hearings on Prop 63, that 1% of those millionaires that live here in California, which was put into a special fund and sits in Sacramento. We have, as the Mental Health Board Chair, put that money into action. We have not sat around and waited to do a housing bond. We have not sat around and thought about doing, you know, other things like that. We have put it into action. And now what we need to do is get those services into the SROs and into supportive housing so that each and every one of you will have the type of services that you need. And I am working on that as a chair of the San Francisco Mental Health Board. And I will continue that work as your next supervisor. Thank Thank you. But there are two things that we need to do when we look at the budget. One, we have to figure out how we protect um, um, budget priorities for our most vulnerable populations, including services. Uh, last four years I've served on the Board of Education. As you all know, every year our budget gets cut by the state. And every year we still manage to raise test scores and close our achievement gap where our lowest performing students are outpacing the district average for, of our highest performing students. How do we do that? How we do that partially is when we make cuts, we don't do it across the board. Because we actually find that that's actually not fair. We actually look at our funding and we look to see who it impacts. And we try to protect funding for those that need it the, first, uh, the most first. The second, we need to raise revenue. I'm a super, um, as a candidate, I'm not afraid to raise revenue. I believe in taxation. I, I believe in a progressive parcel tax. I believe in our hotel fairness initiative. We need to raise revenue from the city of San Francisco. People should pay to live in the city. That builds infrastructure to help us build a better San Francisco. Hi, uh, Jamico again. You know, the supportive services are the lonely stepchild of the budget process. They don't have the constituency that other parts of the budget have. And that's why we have a budget that is being strangled by set-asides that we voted into, into, into law. 90% of the budget is, is tied up in guaranteed funding for libraries and open space and other totally nice things, but these are things that appeal to the middle class when you have supportive services which are so essential to the neediest of us. We're also coming to, in the next couple of years, a, a, the point of bankruptcy with regard to pension reform unless we vote yes on Prop B. So we've got to get our, our priorities straight. Thank you. Well, I think the central, the central issue with supportive services is what people have alluded to is money. We need to put more money into supportive services. We do that uh, through several mechanisms. One is to make our city departments more efficient. Uh, I run a city department. I think I'm the only candidate that does. And last year we had a $6 million budget for the Human Rights Commission. We underspent it by a million. 
Uh, I think department heads need to be held accountable to make sure their departments are efficient. Uh, as uh, accordingly, I think nonprofits need to be accountable too to hold their organizations efficient as well. I think there needs to be annual audits of nonprofits. And I think we need to uh, look at duplicity of services and be able to uh, make them as efficient as possible as well. Also, we need to look at the efficiency of even simple things like uh, diversion from general hospital for uh, for repetitive uh, substance abusers to go to directly to supporting services rather than plug our general hospital and plug our, our EMT and ambulance services. So I think there's things we can do within the current budget, but in addition to that, we also need to raise additional revenue. Thank you. Um, supportive housing projects are really proving to be successful. There's one that's being built by uh, CHP as one of the first of the Transbay Terminal. Um, using developer mitigation for these kind of programs and ongoing um, contributions from the maybe the, the parcel taxes, uh, whether it's just the, the parcel taxes of the property or whether it's a citywide parcel tax, which is what we're talking about. Um, these supportive services are really important. I support things like looking at this, this concept of a, an alcohol tax to actually fund services around um, alcohol treatment. Um, we have a waiting list for treatment in the city, and that is really bad policy in my opinion. So I will do what I can to prioritize services, especially for supportive housing. I think it's a really good part of the solution going forward. Ooh.